Okay, Paul here, and <clears throat> excuse me, today on the bench, I have a battery replacement kit, battery eliminator kit uh, for um, DC tube radios. And we're going to take it out of the package and look at it and put it together. Um, this is provide by, provided by the Antique Electronic Supply Company. And so, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but um, it's pretty cool. So we're going to open it up and get it out of the package, take a look at it, and see what's involved in putting it together. Okay. First thing we have here is our transformer and look at it and there it is it's a big boy it's heavy um, and it has multiple supplies this is the primary here it's a 110 volt input and then you have uh, what will be our A, B, and C supplies to replace the batteries in old DC tube radios. Um, we will only be, um, in the radio I'm currently working in, I only need the A and the B power, the B plus, but we'll go ahead and connect this up for all three and we'll use this, um, we can use it in any application we need. Um, here's the hardware. They give you a bag of hardware, including resistors, some poly capacitors, voltage regulator, and um, all the hardware that is screwed to the board. What I like about this kit is two things. One, um, well, I'll show you as we go forward. Here's the line cord, polarized plug for the kit. And here are the filter capacitors and diodes and some a couple of little potentiometers and a bridge rectifier. Uh, actually, it looks like there's Hmm. Mm, it looks like there's three. That, that must not be bridge rectifiers. They must be uh, voltage regulator circuits. Okay. We'll look at that. What I, what I started to say is what I like about this kit is they give it to you on a pine board, which is really neat. This, uh, you know, it's wood. It matches the antique radios. And they have wood cabinets, you know, and they give you a template to show you where to mount all of the uh, items on the board. So you just overlay that and you see here we have our A plus and A minus. That would be the filament voltage. Here we have our B minus, and then we have numerous B plus power supplies. Uh, we have a 22 volt DC, 45, 67, 90, and 135. The radio I bought this kit for will use the uh, the A uh, filament voltage, A plus and minus, and uh, 90 volt B B positive and B uh, for the B plus. It also has a C uh, voltage, C battery replacement voltage, which the radio that we're putting this in doesn't need that. So it shows you where everything goes. And that would sit there like so. So you have all the places to mark out for the um, the components and everything has its place so these wires would connect here 
to these connectors here, and then the um, circuit would be connected to all these tabs as needed as we assemble it. The other thing I like about it, besides the fact that it's on a wood base, which is really nice because it matches the uh, era, you know, the it just matches uh, an old wood cabinet um, radio. But the other thing I like about it is it's point-to-point -point wiring. So it's you wire it up just like you do with a radio. The radio that it's going in is point-to-point -point wiring. The capacitors go from tube sockets to terminal strips and things like that, and so do the wires. In this system, it's the same thing. So it looks similar, um, and it's the same technology as the radio itself with the point-to-point -point wiring. They do sell, um, on eBay, they sell a circuit for a battery eliminator like this, but it's nowhere near as good as this. Now, it's made on a printed circuit board with plated through holes, um, and everything is, you know, modern uh, printed circuit board layout. It is um, component wiring, um, and it has the different voltage. It doesn't have all of the voltages that this has, but it has a good number of voltages. But the problem with it is, one, the transformer is a lot smaller. It does not put out enough current for a lot of the radios that you would want to use it in. So this one is much more beefy because it has a bigger transformer. It puts out a lot more power. And you can see the, the template is pretty good. It's got the holes exactly where the screws go for the transformer. So you screw the transformer down to the board. You drill a hole right through and put bolts in. And I don't know if they recommend it, but we're going to countersink the bolt so that this sits flat inside the chassis of the radio where the battery would normally go. Okay, so here's our instructions. And this is a regulated power supply. So it has the A, B, and, uh, and C uh, battery um, system. This is the parts list. It comes with it. We have the transformer, which is here, T1. It's the power transformer. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five capacitors um, of different values. Then we have one, two, three. Um, well, we got three diodes here, the three bridge rectifiers. So those are bridge rectifiers, and I was correct. We have three bridge rectifiers. A 2 amp at 400 volts and two 2 amps at 100 volts. So we got a power rectifier and two um, intermediate power rectifiers. Um, we have Zener diodes, 1 watt, 11 volts. We have 10 of those. We have two Zener diodes at 22 volts, 1 watt power. Um, which you can see that's plenty of power at 22 volts. Um, we have two transistors. We have a high power MPN uh, transistor, and we have a uh, another transistor, an MPS um, transistor chip. We have an IC integrated voltage regulator chip, an LM317T. We have a thermistor, which is really nice. If this circuit gets hot, it shuts itself off. That is a good um, feature. So it has uh, protection again for the radio as well as the actual components. Uh, it protects the chassis of the radio and the tubes. It protects this unit, and it also protects the wood cabinet of the radio. So that's a big plus. We have one resistor, 100K ohm, at a half watt. We have three resistors at 10K ohm at a half watt. We have one 15K ohm at a half watt. And we have one 4.7 ohm at a half watt. And we have 
uh, some potentiometers. We have a 50K ohm potentiometer and a 1K ohm potentiometer, and those are to set the uh, voltages uh, that we want uh, as we need. We have a half watt 220 ohm resistor and, of course, the power transformer. We got wire nuts, two wire nuts with, with twist connectors, and that's probably to connect the power cord. And then we have the, the, the power cord itself. So those are the parts that are in the kit. Not a bad kit. And then we have the instructions, which step by step that tells us how to assemble this. So we're going to assemble this unit and it'll probably be a couple videos because this is a time consuming process but I wanted to start by showing you the, um, the makeup of the kit and what we're going to be doing and then we'll go from there. At different parts of the video I will be pausing the video while I do certain things for instance uh, drilling the holes and bolting down the power transformer. I'm not going to do all that on film, on video, because it would take so much video um, and you'd get, you'd get bored. But you'll get the idea as we go and I'll explain what I'm doing in each step as we go through the procedure. So we'll also be evaluating their uh, installation procedure, which is should be pretty accurate. There's a picture of what it will look like when it's finished, and again, you see the point-to-point -point wiring, just like in the radio itself. Um, everything is soldered, like these diodes, these inner diodes that come around for the different voltages, they're soldered together on the ends, and uh, we'll look at all that. And here's the schematic diagram of the circuit. So if you wanted to build this yourself you could get these components and build it yourself but it's cheaper just to buy the kit than it is to actually buy the components so that's why i buy the kit when i'm doing these dc radios um it's a it's a just an easier way to go the power transformer here the primary as i said is this is the black wires and that's 120 volts input 60 hertz. Then you have red, yellow, and green. The red is the, the plate winding or the B plus line, and it's 140 volts AC. So it's a step up transformer from 120 volts to 140 volts on the output. So it actually increases the voltage on the, for the plate voltages. And then when it's rectified, the DC voltage actually is higher, and it uses the voltage um, a doubling circuit, I'm sure, to increase the voltage up to 135. Well, you'll get 135 out of 140, so I guess it doesn't need the voltage doubler in this particular case, because you got 140 volts AC. That'll give you enough for any radio, DC radio. The yellow is the biased voltage. It's, um, oh, I didn't mention that the red is rated, the plate is rated at 100 milliamps. So you got plenty of power capability on that line. The, the yellow is 28 volts AC, and that would be the bias voltage uh, for radios that need the bias voltage. This particular radio doesn't need it. We'll still go ahead and connect the circuit just because we got it and we got the components and it makes sense to set it up. And um, even though we won't use it on the radio, that this will be installed in on this particular unit. The uh, filament winding is the green lines and they're rated at 10.5 volts AC, 2 amps. So you got plenty of filament power. Um, of course, we'll be dropping that voltage down to 1.5 volts for the radio we're using. So we'll be using the 1.5 volts here, 
and that's where one of those potentiometers comes in. We can drop the voltage to whatever we want. So we're going to set it for 1.5 volts. The B plus is already configured for 22 volts, 45 volts, 67 volts, 90 volts, and 135 volts. We're going to use the 90 volt rail for the radio this is going in. But again, we'll go ahead and uh, use all the components. And then um, this this here, we won't be even setting the voltage. We don't have a need for it on this, so uh, we won't be doing that. But um, we will have these capabilities in this unit. So that's where we're at, and we'll start with that. that. And you see it's very simple. There's not a lot of information. It's just uh, taking the time to set it up. Just one, two pages, and then that's the way it looks. So that's the diagram. That's just the introductory part to us. So not a lot to put it together. Just time consuming because you got to assemble the whole thing. So you got the original cost of the kit plus the labor time to assemble it. And... Um, that's, you know, what you got to deal with. But again, if you were to buy these components and try to build it yourself by the schematic or by the diagram, it's going to cost you more for the parts than this whole kit costs. The kit is a little pricey. It's somewhere around $70 or so plus shipping. Uh, if you were to buy all these components, the transformer alone would probably cost you close to a hundred dollars. So, and then you know voltage regulators and all are not not cheap. So, Zener diodes, and then you know shipping and all of that too. So, you, by the time you do that, build one yourself, you're um, paying paying a lot more than just getting the kit. Um, this looks like the best side of the board, so we'll use it. And since it's got some scarring there in the board, which is just the way it was cut, I'm going to put that where it's the least obvious, which would probably be up here. I'll put those up there. I like this side of the board better than that. It's got some rough, rough sawn wood here in the grain. It's just not that great. So I'm going to use this side. It's much cleaner. Mount this here. So the first step i got to do is... It, uh, mark everything of where they get drilled. So I'm going to put the template on there and I'm going to take an awl and I'm going to mark all of the places where these get connected into the wood. Then we can take the template off. I actually could leave the template on. It has got a backing on it. But uh, I might just take it off so we, we don't have it on there. Um, you could just put this on there and leave the template and actually put all the components right on the template, but uh, there's no need to do that. So that's part one. I'm going to start on that, and then as we get going, uh, we will add to uh, another part of the video as we go, so it won't be so long. This is the introduction. And I'll read you a little bit of what it says here. The introduction, the Model K101A battery eliminator kit is a fully regulated solid state power supply designed to operate an antique battery radios directly from 117 volts AC power source. Has five fixed plate outputs for the B, B plus supply and adjustable filament and adjustable bias voltages for A and C respectfully. The K101A can also be used to power custom or experimental circuits, and it can make a handy addition to the service bench. So, you know, I'll probably get another one and, and assemble it and keep it. I've been just making them as I need them for radios, but it would be a good tool for a bench. I have, um, you know, Variax, and I have uh, some DC power supplies, but it would be good to have one that's just designed for radios in, in, um, in the future. So I, I'll probably build another one after I build this one. 
just to keep in house. Um, it has a single power transformer with three secondary windings that provides isolation from the line and between the power supply sections. Now that's a great advantage to having this in the radio as opposed to, um, you know, a, a line cord tube radio because this is totally isolated from the mains. So you have uh, isolation when you're working on the radio. Now, if you decide to build one of these and use one, of course you do so at your own risk. I am not saying that this is safe. This is still high voltage um, with a lot of current, a lot of power coming out of this transformer. It can kill you if you don't know what you're doing. So if you build one of these, you're doing it at your own risk. Um, but if you follow the instructions and do what it says, it's pretty safe um, to assemble. Just be aware that it is, you know, like anything else, if you're working on tube radios, that's even more dangerous than a battery radio because they got voltages up to sometimes 450, 500 volts. So you got to be very careful when working on any kind of um, antique radio or tube radio system. But so I'm going to start with this. The first thing it looks like is uh, the uh, power transformer gets mounted. Um, so we will look under mechanical assembly here. I'm going to skip over the circuit description because I already went through that. I'm just showing it to you. Uh, the K101A is built on a wooden breadboard uh, the way many home-built radios were constructed in the 1920s and 30s. I mean, that's pretty neat. That's when the radios were made. The power transformer is screwed directly to the board, and all the other parts are secured by ground lugs. A template is supplied with each kit to help you locate the necessary holes accurately. Peel off the protective backing and apply the template surface to the board. The pressure-sensitive adhesive will prevent it from moving about as you make the screw starting holes with an awl or other pointed tool. Be sure to drill the two holes used for mounting the heat sink, this one here, um, after making all the holes, you may carefully remove the template or you may leave it on if you wish and begin mounting components. Now, I would assume that, well, the template's white, but uh, if it was clear, I'd probably be more inclined to leave it on, but it's not clear. Using the template as a guide, screw all the ground lugs to the board exactly as shown. Next, mount the heat sink with the regulated IC attached. Place a piece of scrap wood on top and carefully tap the heat sink until the locating pins are driven fully into the breadboard. So you drill down uh, probably a half inch or so, this three quarter inch stock, probably three eighths inch rather. And then you tap the heat sink into those holes and it wedges in place and stays there. Uh, driven into the breadboard, secure at the assembly by strapping it to the ground lug under the heat sink using a cable tie supplied with the kit. So there's a tie down cable strip there. You can secure it down to this, one of these tabs to make sure it stays down into the board. Finally, prepare the mount for the power transformer. Okay, so that's the last thing. Pre-wire the transformer terminals using the pictorial diagram as a guide. Anchor it to the board using two of the 46 screws provided. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Um, and then it talks about, you know, being careful when you're doing a wire and double check your work, make sure everything's right. But we'll get through that as we go. So this takes care of part one. I'm going to go ahead and get everything attached to the board and then we will continue the video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And I appreciate that. It supports me and my channel. And I appreciate whatever support you uh, provide. Have a good day.